I looked at AJ and AJ looked back at me and I was like, what the f was that? He's like, and all of a sudden the car goes, Shoom. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Right now we're running three entries for every dollar you spend on 1320video.com to win this GTR and $15,000. This is a full bolt-ons GTR making it 650 all-wheel horsepower on E85. Perfect amount of power for the street. All this can be yours. All you gotta do is go to 1320video.com. Right now, every dollar you spend is three entries to win this car and 15 grand. I'm Coy Christmas, and today I'm gonna tell you the story about how everything went wrong, everything also went right. Well, so I got started in racing, you know, a couple, about a decade ago easily, started getting into it a little more hot and heavy, started in the GTR area, is where I really enjoyed it. Uh, working with Cicio Performance and those guys out there, and <clears throat> really the reason why we started on the GTRs was because that was my wife's car. I bought it for her, for her I can't remember, it was 2011, we got a 2012 GTR for her, and I uh, got it for her birthday, and man, she about shit her pants on that one. That was a good, that's a good way to keep a wife. And then from there, uh, like everybody else that has a GTR, they wanted to go faster. So we started doing that, and we started going <laughs> full bolt-on. And then full bolt-on wasn't enough, and we had to move out from the 3.8 liter to a 4.1 liter. Uh, and then it was a 4.3 liter, and it was bigger turbos, and more, uh, a better transmission. And then pretty soon, we had ourselves a race rocket, if you will, uh, for my wife's car. And then I was jealous because uh, her cars were significantly faster than Line. So I had to go buy a GTR. And I got into the GTRs and I actually really enjoyed the full bolt-on and I had a blast with that. But then I moved to, I think it was, I forgot what Sissio called it. Um, it was a something plus kit. And so I moved into that and that was pushing about 1,250 horsepower somewhere around there. Now my wife was pushing like 1,600 at the time before she went up to like 2,600. Uh, when she got to really big, you know, really big power, uh, but it, it was still, it was a lot of fun to drive and I enjoyed it. We started going out to the tracks, we started racing, doing the, the drag strip ones, obviously going down like the FL2Ks and Texas 2Ks and uh, we'd go to the, uh, the Summit Raceway, which I think was in Ohio. Um, we'd go to a couple different places, we'd race a lot down there, but one place we did get to go race that we enjoyed a lot was driving down to Brainerd, Brainerd International Raceway. When I was, uh, was there, I started noticing these billboards and, and poster signs and they kind of said, they said things like, hey, we have um, Proving Grounds, which was one event that they do that like twice a year. And Proving Grounds was a lot of fun. I'm trying, I can't remember the name of the, the company that would put that on. I know the, guy, the guy's name was Dan or Dana or something like that. But anyhow, it was a super, super awesome event. And you do it twice a year and you got to do a bunch of different activities. They had like drifting and things like that. And then the other one they had in summer was called Power Cruise. And so we did our first Power Cruise. And I think it was around 20... 14, somewhere around there. And we did our first power cruise, and we, were, we, we thought we were the only people with GTRs. And that's how I met my buddy AJ. Because I was over there driving around, and I was like, wait a second. So he parked, and then I pulled up next to him. I said, is this your GTR? And he's like, yeah. I said, oh, fuck, man, did we just become friends? And we started talking. I was like, are you ex-military? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God, we're like bosom buddies now. Just like stepbrothers. You know, I'm like, oh, shit, we're best friends. So we, we, I mean, it was, I, I shit you not, like, Two weeks after that, he was up at my house jumping out of an airplane. I mean, that's how, he was like, hey man, I'm gonna go up there to uh, jump out of an airplane. Can I come sit at your place? I'm like, come on. And so like a friendship was born and it's been like that ever since. I mean, we've been next to each other everywhere. As a matter of fact, we, we, we pretty much moved together. We moved out of, he was living in Minnesota. I was in Wisconsin, about two hour and a half hours away. He's in the cities, I was up in the Twin Ports. And then he moved to Arizona and I'm like, I guess it's time to move to Arizona. My wife said, There's, you get no argument out of me, so we moved to Arizona. I went to Texas 2K and that's when I just bought the uh, Ford GT. I had a, a yellow uh, GT with black stripes. It was like 1300 horsepower. Well, Sissio Performance had built it up. I took the supercharger out and put twin turbos on it. And it, you know, it was just, <laughs> that, was a, that was a badass car that you, you have to know how to drive that car or you will kill yourself. There is no, it's all driver mod in that car. Uh, the Ford GT has no help at all. <laughs> and that is just so fast. I got that and uh, other friends of mine is like uh, uh, Perrin, um, Perrin and Chris, they're over at Chicago Motor Cars. And I was talking to them and I'm like, dude, you know, I, I really want to, I really want to check out a Lambo. I, I want a Skittles car. 
You know, that's what I called them, the Skittles cars. Because we'd drive around in the GTRs, we were doing it for so long, and my wife was like a thousand plus horsepower over me, and I'm like, I don't want to get my ass kicked by her all the time. She already gets all the, I mean, 1320 would sit there and cover her all the time. You know, it's like, oh, look, here's a woman who just freaking cracked the 7 1. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you know, not to mention her language on the track is always amusable, is amusing, you know? <clears throat> So I, Pring goes, tell you what, man, when we get back, because it was at Texas 2K, because when we get back, this was like 20, 2017, I think it was. He goes, when we get back, <clears throat> I got one. I'll send it to you. Just drive it. Let me know what you think. He knew what he was doing. So I get, I get this white one comes in. I get it. And actually, I didn't even drive it at first. My son drove it. He took it to prom and everything else. It was like a 2015, <clears throat> you know, it wasn't the Perfect Monte, it was the regular Huracan. And, uh, but it still, you know, it's just, it sounded badass. It just felt good. I was like, this car is the shit. So I send the, <laughs> I get the car, I trade in the, the, the GTR. I immediately wrap this car, this crazy color. They put these badass wheels on it. You know, the same wheels that I've got here. Um, and then I, and I did a, this crazy power coat and stuff and everybody called it uh, Skittles I think is what everybody was calling it was because it just looked all crazy it looked like a tie-dye right took it down to the car show people were like holy shit this is amazing and then I was like yeah this is great and I was like but it's not quite fast enough I'm like it's it's cool it's a Lamborghini but we need some more power and we need to put a different presence on it right so I'm like all right let's pull the wrap off of this called up I mean geez this wasn't even Four months later, I pick up the phone and I call up and I, I call print up and say, hey, will you take this car back? You know, not give it, not take it back because it's something wrong. I'm like, can I trade it in and get a different one? He's like, yeah. And I said, well, I want to get one of the Performantes, you know, because I had put like a 1610 wing on spoiler on the back of, of that one stuff to make it look cool, but it wasn't the Performante. I wanted the Performante. So he's like, yeah, I've got one. I said, great. I'm not even going to take delivery of it. Send it down to Underground Racing. And I'd met Kevin and Casey, but most, I talked to Kevin the most. And I talked to Kevin and I'm like, look, man, would you hook me up with a, a package? And I think it was a state, they called it a stage three. Uh, it was a stage three was what the first one was, was a stage three. So I got that and then um, I drove around and beat the shit out of it. And it, when I finally got it, he got it done for me really quick. And I was like, it's, this is great, but I want to go faster. The difference between driving the GTR and driving the Lamborghini in, with power like that, because they're similar power, the difference was, it felt like the GTR, when it was going, it would go bum, 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 you know, you hit your gears and stuff, and it feels like, you know, you get to the top gear and it's like, eh. The Lamborghini felt like it's like, I'm gonna just keep going, instead of being like, like slingshot, like it was like pulling you, you know, and you're just like, oh my God, it's just the coolest freaking sound you could possibly ha imagine being inside those underground racing Lamborghinis. So take off in that car, and, uh, I, and we're doing, uh, we did the, the power cruise that year. And AJ's with me, and we're doing a power cruise, and we get beat. Uh, well, it wasn't with AJ in the car. I had another guy in the car named Adam. Um, and we got beat by this Mustang. And it was like one of those uh, Lebanon twin turbo type setups. And he was pushing like 1600 horse. And he just, you know, he was going, we were neck to neck because obviously I'm a lighter car and everything. We're going down the straight, we're doing, it, the straight is supposed to be 100, we're doing like 215. So we're hauling down there. And then all of a sudden he hit the scramble button and he's just like, I'm gonna blow the car type thing, you know? And he's like, and then he let off and I was like, 
what in the hell? So I picked up the phone and I, I think I was at like 1,350 horsepower, something like that with UGR. So I call up and I talk to Kevin. I'm like, man, I just had a Mustang whoop my ass. He's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, he's got some power in it, but he whooped my ass. What am I gonna do about it? He's like, Coy, I can't do anything more to the car. You need to put a billet transmission in there. I said, well, it's coming back, baby. So we sent it back, put the billet transmission in it. And then I'm like, all right, we're wrapping this bad boy in Vader. Cause I'm coming back with a vengeance, baby. So we did. And we wrapped it up, and um, I was like, when we're, we're coming up the design of it, you know, I, I was like, all right, what's, I really like purple. Purple's my favorite color. So I'm like, I want to come up with something really cool. But then I was like, dude, let's kind of do like, kind of like a retro 80s Miami Vice type look type thing to it. So then we did it, and then when we put Vader on the front of the hood, I was like, oh man, dude, because I, I, I got gold chains and stuff, not like crazy like that one. Well, actually, I have a gold chain now that has Vader on it. I should have worn that damn thing. I forgot about that. So um, anyhow, I was like, yeah. So I was like, dude, let's put the chain come down right on the front emblem of the Lamborghini so it looks like a pimp chain, right? So we called him Pimp Vader. And that's how this thing was basically became what it was. So uh, the next year shows up and we're like, and I had this car for two, let's call it two power cruises, okay? So the next year, um, we show up with this bad boy, and I've got all the juice in it now. You know what I mean? It's been upgraded. It's like the Stage 3 Plus, plus if you will, type thing. I'm running MS-109 with VP uh, inside the import. I mean, it's a two-to-one mix type setup in there. I mean, you're talking freaking rocket fuel. I mean, it, obviously, because the they couldn't even put the damn fire out. But we would load up, I mean, for us to get ready to go to Brainerd, it's a full-blown event. I got a big dual, not the dual, I got the big 250, double car. I got a double car and a single uh, trailer. We've got, the, <laughs> we've got the Ford GT loaded up on there. We've got the R34 loaded up there, which is a thousand horsepower made by Sissio as well. You've got, uh, and then you've got Vader, um, which is this bad boy. So we've got those three cars there, right? And Vader, you know, is, is, is pushing some reasonably, you know, pretty good power. But, you know, I've got that underground racing Gestapo clause, so I'm not allowed to tell you how fast it was. But I'll just say it, it had all of it, you know what I mean? So <clears throat> we're getting ready. We're heading down there. we got all the stuff. we got all the cars. We've got our trailers. We've got, a, you know, a, a pull behind, a, you know, like a 43-foot camper and stuff we're staying. I mean, this is a show. I mean, when you go to when you go to Power Cruise, there's a lot of people there, a lot of cars. You got about 800 cars. I think that year was like one of the biggest years you had there. We know all the guys there from Australia. Uh, pretty much, that's Gup. He's the main guy that runs it. And the other thing that was big about it for me was <clears throat> AJ was leaving. He had already been. He'd already used my truck and everything, and drive down to Arizona and moved his stuff. He'd already left. You know, earlier that year, I just think it was like maybe May or June, you know, and I was like, hey, he's like, cool, I got to come back up to get some stuff, you know, and he's got his boy with him, uh, Gabe, and he's like, hey, I got to come back, get some stuff, I got to get a couple things here, do this, that, everything else, get ready for the house to sell, that kind of stuff. And I'm like, dude, you want to come up Power Cruise and let's, let's rip it? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, dope. <clears throat> well, I try to do something a little bit more exciting besides this year, and we've done it now for many years, is because everybody always asks me, hey, Coy, can I get a ride in your car? Because that's the thing. Everybody wants to ride in the car. So this year, I'm like, you know what, dude? I, I'm, I'm spending all this money and everything. I'm going to charge for it, right? But I'm not going to charge anybody. I, they give me whatever they want. It's a donation. And then all the money was going to, um, oh, I'm trying to remember, it was uh, the Cruise for Cancer. All the money went to the Cruise for Cancer, which we raised like over five grand in two days because I didn't make the third day. <laughs> but we go... Um, we had this, li li this big list, everybody's signing up, and then they gave me a donation. Like one person gave me a thousand bucks. You know what I mean? They're like, hey, here's a thousand bucks. Thank you very much. It's great. It's going to a good cause, right? And we did it, and I forget, it was for one, uh, a young boy that had leukemia. So we do this thing called a cruise for cancer up in the Twin Ports to give a little sideline. Uh, and it, we do it every year, and the, all the money comes together for that, and then we give that to, we choose a kid. Uh, I don't, but you know, the group does, chooses a kid, and we give that to them. Some, you know, somebody that's dying from cancer or leukemia, or which is similar to saying, you know, something that's going really, really wrong, right? And it's been, it's an absolute great thing for people to do. <clears throat> well, AJ's like, yeah, dude, I'll get done with my stuff. I'll come up there. You know, I'll come see you. That sounds good. And I'm like, okay, so that was Thursday, right? And Thursday, you just kind of get there and set everything up. You can't go do anything until Friday. So Friday morning is the first day you get to go out there and do, do your racing. So I've already got people all lined in a minute and then you got to take your little class. This is your safety class, right? It says, if you get in an accident or a fire like that, don't get out of your car. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't. So anyhow, 
damn, that shit hit me right there. <laughs> um, so anyhow, we, uh, we drove around, did our stuff, and that night I was sitting there and I was like, man, I swear that like this car is not firing on all cylinders. You know what I mean? I feel like it's, it's, it's moving, but it's not, it's not like just, you know, it's got more, right? I know it's got more. So AJ's like, well, let's change the spark plugs out in the morning. <laughs> it must've been like freaking four o'clock in the afternoon or something like that, right? On, on Friday. And I'm like, I don't think I have enough of them. I think I've got like eight. So AJ's like calling every, texting, calling, whatever, every single auto parts store, auto parts store within the area because we're trying to make sure we've got the right, the right spark plugs, right? And he finds two more. So we get them. And then that morning, it was early. I had just put on my flight suit because we were wearing these flight suits. It was so much fun about flight suits, like a real Air Force issue flight suits for my son and my, and for my uh, wife and for myself. We had these little names. Mine had like uh, Darth Vader on it, like that on my patch, you know. And my son's was I forgot what his was, and I think my wife's actually was like eat a bag of dicks or something like that. No, it said no lift, Alex. It said no lift, Alex, because she does talk like that. So, so I'm like, oh man, we um, we start changing out the spark plugs and. I think it was the uh, uh, number 12 torque or something like that that we lost that we couldn't, we were trying to get down there because it had fallen down and we're like, oh crap. And we're like, well, I don't think it's going to mess anything up. I don't know if the torque was the one that was the big problem or not, but who knew? <clears throat> so we get all the spark plugs changed and they're already, they're already sitting ready to do like their very first like runs around and it's taking a little bit longer than we anticipated because we had to move a couple stuff. We'd never done it before. Um, and we got everything just dialed in just right. So I'm like, hey, AJ, you, uh, let's go take this thing out on the street to make sure everything's good. Now, I, I had not been in a, a, a major car accident or something, and I put it this way. I've been driving cars that are, you know, four, four digit horsepower cars for like so long now that it didn't seem like anything to me. You just get it and you step on the gas. It's like, choo, people are like, oh my God, it's so powerful. I'm like, eh, it's not that fast. And once you dro drove Air Force One, when I won Texas 2K uh, roll racing, and you do 230 miles an hour down the strip in a car like that, you realize this ain't shit in power wise, right? But it really is, but you don't think about it, right? You feel indestructible. So, you know, this particular car didn't even have a roll cage in it. You know, I didn't have any, it had a fire suppression system in it. <laughs> We forgot to pull the switch, but it didn't have the roll cage or, or anything like that in there. And because of what we're doing on this track, you don't wear any helmets, no safety gear, no nothing. It's just your seatbelt, rock and roll, you go. And it, you're not supposed to, you can't like cross each other's lanes, do the apex, stuff like that. You stay in your lanes, that's what you're supposed to do. Not everybody does what they're supposed to do, but it is what it is, right? So we go out on the highway and the way this car works is that you have to warm it up for like, say five to 10 minutes. Right, and then you have to drive it for 10 miles before you get it. <clears throat> that's what Kevin told me to do, and that's what I do every single time. And the, we, never, we never had any problem with the cars. I mean, I've, every car that I've had from underground racing, never had a problem with it. it. It just drove as it's supposed to drive if I listened to the rules. You know what I mean? That's why you get the rules. So we track it down and we go, down, we go up, uh, I forgot what that highway is. We go up that highway and we go up for about 10 minutes and we do a loop around. We come back and it's like, you ready to get it? And he's like, yes, hit it. And we hit it and we were, it was like, and we looked at each other like, and both our arms, our fucking hairs were standing up and we were like, oh shit, it's hitting on all cylinders now. And I'm like, yes it is. He's like, oh, we're about to go mess someone up. I get the first one, I'm, I'm going with you first. Go by real quick, go by the trailer real quick. Let me drop some stuff off real quick. Let's just get in line. And so I go back there and <clears throat> one of my old employees, his name is, we call him Big Ben, Ben Greiger. He's like six foot 10, he's just massive tall guy. And he's like, okay, I'm like, ready for a race. I'm like, hey, hold on, man. We just changed everything out. We changed the spark plugs out. So now we're gonna go, you know, give this thing a, a wheel. So we go around and we hit it the first time and we're just like, oh my God, this is, this is gonna be fun. And everybody there knows AJ and I. I mean, not saying like we're the most popular people on the planet, but we always bring them probably the more exotic cars that are out there. Um, and, and they're obviously really fast and we get along with everybody. I mean, when you get done and racing and stuff, you go grab yourself a solo cup, fill up some Southern Comfort Diet Coke. That's my, my, my choice of poison. And we walk around, you talk to everybody, you go to campfires and you have yourself a good time. That's the whole point. It's, again, it's like an engagement, you know? <clears throat> so we go out there, we go to a track, we go around, boom. And I forgot what turn that is. I think that's like turn nine or something like that. 
and we make the turn, and these guys in this, uh, and I forgot the guys' names, but they're in the white um, Evo, and there's a couple of them in there, and you know, they're, they're pushing some power too. I mean, not this power, but they're pushing some power. And they're all, I mean, they might have been eight, 900,000 horsepower, somewhere around there, right? And so we pull up next to each other, and AJ's sitting on the passenger side, he's filming, I'm on the left, AJ's sitting there filming. And we come around, and this one corner, there's a bridge, and that's how you come into the place. <clears throat> so you go, and it's basically, what you do is right when you get up to the bridge, and everybody guns it, right? So we're, we're coming around, and we get it, and I hit it, and I'm in like sec second gear. It's like, whoop, get it. It's like, and you get it, and you don't pull the paddles like that, you just step on the gas, and it's gone, right? And you just kind of maneuver it. <clears throat> and we got it, and it was like second gear, and then third gear, and I think we were doing a little over 100, maybe about 110 or so. And right then, you heard whoop, just like that. <laughs> I looked at AJ, and AJ looked back at me, and I was like, what the fuck was that? He's like, and all of a sudden the car goes, Shoom! and the car starts spinning. As soon as it happened, I grabbed the wheel and tried to bring it back, and I'm holding the wheel to the point where for two weeks, my, all my, my, my forearms were so sore to just even grab like a glass to take a drink out of, because I'd been holding it for so hard. And I'm like, we're gonna hit that wall. We weren't even close to the wall, but I already knew in my head, I'm like, we're gonna hit that wall. I'm gonna foot on the brake, everything. There's, we're done, right? And I mean, it just felt like we had so much freaking time from the point that happened to when I hit the freaking wall, right? And it really wasn't that fast. I mean, we saw the video of it, which we found the AJ's phone inside the car after this thing got destroyed. And he's got, he had, he rebuilt the phone so it would work because it was all on fire and everything it was completely screwed. And it shows it was like less than a second and a half, or like 1.5 seconds, it was less than that before when that happened to when we hit the wall. But it felt like it was like forever. So I looked at AJ and I mean, you have a thousand things going through your head. I'm like, he's supposed to go home tomorrow to fly back to. In Arizona to be with his wife and his littles, you know, because he's got littles. And I'm like, I'm looking at him and I'm like, son of a bitch, you know, I'm, I'm mad at myself now, right? There's nothing I could have done. What happened, happened. But there is a way to like mitigate risk, you know, let's try to figure out the best way. So I, I, I mean, all this is going through my head in this short period of time. And as I looked over to AJ, I said, brace, we're going to hit the wall. He's like, oh, shit. And I saw him like put his hands up like this, right? We had the windows down, right? Obviously. And I'm holding the wheel <clears throat> and I'm like, all right, do I let the car hit on the back end, right? Which is the motor and everything. And I'm like, that's gonna be a bomb. That's not a good idea because we got the racing fuel in here and everything's in there. Now, I probably could have done a little bit better job, but you know, it, it, what happened, happened. I knew better to hit the front because I'm like, if we hit the front, we're gonna just, we're gonna die because we're going way too fast to hit that K barrier like that. It's just not going to be good. And I'm like, it's, I can't hit it on AJ's side. It's not his fault. I'm the responsible party here. I'm driving the car. This is my, this is my choice. You know, I made the bed. I sleep in it. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to take it and hit the wall. And I saw it sliding in, and I shoot not right before it hit that wall, man. I got scared as shit. It came in so fast. And I was like, oh, and I leaned over so I wouldn't be against the wall right here. Uh, or against the door, I should say. So I leaned over, and that was it. That was the last thing I can remember. It was like, <clears throat> all I remember was like that loud sound. And the next thing I know, I'm like, AJ, you're ripping my ass. You're ripping my ass, AJ. You're ripping my. This is literally what I'm telling him. I had my flight suit, and I had it tied around like this, and he's dragging me from the car. I can't see anything. Like nothing, I can't see anything at all. He's dragging me from the car and my pants came off so he's pulling my ass cheek across the graph, across the, the, the road and it's just ripping it to shreds like a grater, right? And I'm bleeding all my ass, right? And I didn't even know the accident even happened. You know, I knew the accident hit but I didn't know the severity of it, right? I'm like, what are you doing? You're ripping my ass. He's like, Coy, the car is gonna blow up. We gotta go. I'm like, you're ripping my ass. He goes, like, you're heavy as f 
the car's going to blow up. I got it. So he's pulling, he's dragging me. And that's just, you know, AJ's a retired Black Hawk pilot, you know, did his two tours over there. And, you know, a real good man. And he, he's a guy that understands to, he doesn't run from danger, he runs into danger. And I didn't realize that I had split my head open as wide as I had. And to the point where, and I've seen the videos afterwards, and obviously I was at the hospital and got the 30 stitches and stuff. You know, I, I didn't realize that I'm like, AJ, I'm sitting there talking to him, like, and I couldn't see. I could hear everything, but my, I was completely blind. And since then, I have to wear glasses now because um, I obviously damaged something. But I couldn't see anything. And he goes, and he's like, Corey, you're bleeding really bad, man. I, got, I can't let you go. I said, dude, can I just lay down? He's like, no, you cannot lay down. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, what's in my hand? And he's like, he has his thumb in this hole in my head to keep it from bleeding just because it was just born down blood. And I'm like, what the f you know? And he's like, I can't, and I'm like, dude, I, and so I can't remember, somebody finally showed up and sat behind me so I could lean back because I, I had no, my body just felt like bleh, right? You know, it just was jelly. The only thing I thought about was, oh shit, am I gonna fucking die? Because I couldn't see. So I asked AJ probably like seven or eight times, hey man, am I gonna die? No, you're not gonna die, Corey, you're gonna be okay. Am I gonna die? No, man, you're not gonna be okay. He didn't know if I was or was not. I was white as a fucking ghost, and I'm already white. I was really, 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 really white. And he's just holding on to me like this, and I could hear everybody, and now you could hear the commotion of people and stuff, and the ambulance, then the ambulance shows up, and my neck was all jacked up. And ever since that happened, my back's been just jacked. So um, they get me in the, in, the, in the gurney. I think it's what it's called, you know, a little stretcher. They lay me down. They put this big crazy brace around my neck and stuff. And meanwhile, I didn't even know what happened to AJ. I didn't know the car was on fire. I didn't even seen the car. I didn't realize that AJ had just literally changed the rest of his life because of me. I mean, his hands are permanently because he had to go through the fire, and I was on fire, because it all came out of the gas tank, and it was all up, on, up, up my window, and over the, I mean, shit, the flames were fucking 20 feet up in the air, and it was the racing fuel, I couldn't even put it out, and, and, and I just remember getting in there, and it wasn't until they, they brought the, 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 amp, the actual stretcher and, and banged it on to bring it in the ambulance, when they did that, all of a sudden I could see again, and I saw the, the light above. And I'm like, where's AJ? And AJ was up in the front. And they're like, dude, and I, could, I couldn't see him because I couldn't turn. And all I could hear was, man, you're really burnt really bad. Are you okay? He's like, I don't know, man. I'm hurt a lot bad, but I'm okay. Let's fine. Let's get to the hospital, right? And I didn't even see the severity of his hands, how bad he was burnt. And he looked like, you know, like the f drum that goes around on, the, on, on, on the, the score with the fire on, you know what I mean? Like a pig. I mean, he was, was jacked. So... My wife gets in the car and, you know, kind of put a show a little more fun on it, you know, have a little, you know, spin on it. And my last name is Christmas. First name is obviously Coy, but I like having fun with it. So they're like, all right, let's see how, uh, let's see how, how you feeling, buddy. Are you feeling okay? You know, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. And they're like, all right, man, well, look, you got a really, you really smacked your head, bud. So we need to ask you a couple questions to make sure you're okay. Can you give us your name? I said, yes, it's Henry Halloween. And my wife goes, bullshit. Koi Christmas. He's laughing. I'm laughing. They're like, ah, oh, he's fine. He's fine. So we, fight, we shed some light on it, right? We had some fun. And I got to tell you, the one thing I will tell you is that AJ and I have made, made a, a, I mean, it, obviously we've bled together, so we're bonded for life. It's just how it goes. I don't know. Anybody that's gone through that kind of thing, it, it doesn't matter. You can't get mad at each other. I cannot talk to him for eight months, and the next day I talk to him, it's like we haven't even missed a date. And that's not the case, but you see what I'm saying. We get into the hospital. <laughs> Both AJ and I are like, I gotta take a piss. You know, and they're like, go ahead. What? So you should have thought about that before you got in the accident. I'm like, what the fuck? Really? You know, they're like, yeah, we can't let you move. You can't get up. We gotta, we're checking you guys internally. So they're doing CT scans and all these different scans on us and stuff to make sure that that's nothing like moved and broken, like and ruptured or something really wrong, right? And uh, amazingly enough, I, I didn't have anything broken on me. I, I messed my body up real bad. I had some burns on my back, and obviously I split the hell out of my head. But now I grew hair back here, which is kind of cool, so I don't have a bald spot no more. So if everybody wants to know how to do it, just roll a Lamborghini or skateboard it across the cave barrier is what you gotta do. So I, uh, I remember the last time I had saw AJ in the hospital, they hadn't sewn my head up yet, 
and him and I were sending videos to each other because we couldn't leave our beds. And they had him in another area because he's going to get ready to put in a helicopter and flown to the helicopter over to Hennepin County for the burn center because his hands and everything's all jacked. And they're like, the ladies are like, hey, could you guys you know, stop doing this right now because you're cracking us up. You're, I mean, the nurses were just fucking dying because they had given him some drugs. So he was all, woo, woo. I had never seen AJ like that. He was just like goofy as shit. And we're sending videos to each other. And I was like, hey man, like my first video I sent him, I was like, man, I'm really sorry, dude. You're not gonna get to go home now. You're not gonna give you have any sex for a little while either. I'll put you in the hospital for a while. I'm really sorry about that, dude, my bad, you know? He's like, oh man, don't worry about it. He goes, what's the lesson we learned today? I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, <laughs> we do not drive a car for 24 hours after we change the fucking spark plugs. And I'm like, that's a good point. We're not driving cars once we change spark plugs now. So now I, I swear to you, we've done this on other cars. We change spark plugs, they sit for 24 hours. We do not drive. We think it's a bad omen. That's our thing, but that's our thing, right? And it makes us last still, even though it's a bad thing. So yeah, we just got done and, and, he, and he, we're, we're talking about the whole not changing the spark plugs out, right? And then they tell me, they're like, hey, look, your buddy's got to go to Hennepin County. He's leaving. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, he can't fly the helicopter because that's what he used to do in the army was fly the helicopter. So I'm like, he can't fly the helicopter like he is. They're like, no, 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 we're flying him down there. I thought he was going to fly the fucking helicopter. And they're like, no, he's, he's got to go down for the burn center. He's burnt real bad. And I'm like, can I see him before he leaves? They said, yes. And so he comes on and he's on his drugs and he's all wrapped up like a mummy and he's walking in like... I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. And he's all dancing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> goofball. Robot my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was fucking weird shit. All right. All right. My name is AJ Santiago, and this is how I saved this man's life. <laughs> <laughs> My name is AJ Santiago, and this is how to survive a burning Lamborghini crash. <laughs> Step one, have a friend like me. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Don't get knocked out. Don't get, stay awake the whole time. <laughs> All right. Um, so, where do I start? All right. So, the morning of August 3rd, uh, 2019. Um, now, up until this point in time, um, I had actually moved from Minnesota to Phoenix, um, and I was on my way back to Phoenix just to get uh, pick up another vehicle, um, and then I was going to be driving down to back to Phoenix um, when I got a call uh, from Coy, and he said, "Hey, Power Cruise is going on. You can't miss Power Cruise. We do this every." Year. You got you got to see you, you got to be here for this, and I said, you know what, you're 100% right. So I called my wife and said, hey, we're gonna go hang out on the track for a little bit, and then uh, and then we'll be on our way back down to Phoenix. Um, that morning, uh, now the, the car, the Lamborghini, the uh, the Vader was breaking up. You know, it was uh, making power, but it wasn't running like it like it normally would. Um, so uh, so we came to the conclusion that we we're going to change the spark plugs in it, you know, um, try to fix whatever the miss was and uh, ensure sh that worked. So uh, so we changed the plugs. Um, the car was doing great, running fantastic. Uh, we took it out for a test hit on the street, ran like a champ. Um, uh, I, I mean, as a matter of fact, I mean, we were joking about it because we we're like, dude, it's it, it was hitting like it was on 20 cylinders. Like, 10 it had 20 and whatever UGR said it made for power it was making fucking double that it was um, fast because it was just stupid um, and it felt good you know because I was like boom problem solved did my job now let me let me get you know back to Phoenix um, but of course you know we had to do that we had to do the one uh, you know um, I almost call it sacrificial um, uh, parade lap you know just to make sure it was good um, so we did, and of course, you know, uh, and I think Coy was telling it earlier, you know, as we um, got the car on track, you know, we kind of took it easy going around the track, um, and there was a white Evo uh, that was like, hey, they know the car, they know us, you know, they want to make good um, YouTube videos, you know, internet gold like the rest of us, so they're like, hey, let's, let's do a run. And, uh, and then I was in the passenger seat, so I remember going, they were on my right, and I said, hey, we're just testing. You know, so you stay ahead of us. You know, we're not gonna we're not gonna be side by side. Just stay ahead of us. And they were like, "Oh, come on!" And, you know, the, and I said, "Nah, nah, nah. Go ahead." And I said, I'll, "I'll record you. I'll record you guys." And they were like, "Okay." So they stayed about a car ahead of us. Um, as we got to the straightaway, where 
you accelerate, you know, for the short period of time. And it was the, the short straight because had we been on the second straight, the result would be way different um, because the, the, the first straight was a really wide area um, that they use for parking of semis and stuff like that during certain events at Brainerd. Um, so that wide area, they just had, you know, blocked off with these Jersey barriers. Um, so as we approached that bridge, you know, they got on it and they started moving out. So it was like, all right, you know, our turn, you know, so we could keep our separation and, and, and you know, have our little safety window that we wanted. And, uh, and that, that honestly proved to be, well, probably number 10 things that went wrong, but went right. You know what I mean? Because had we let our egos get a hold of us and say, hey, yeah, we'll run you, stay right next to us. And then we go at the same time and as you see in the footage of the car losing control, we would have just taken them right into the wall with us, you know, and that Evo that had three passengers in it would have crashed also and there'd be five of us that are all fucked up, right? Um, so it was paramount how, how, how it went down that they stayed in front of us. Um, and when you watch the video, you know, we go under the bridge, we get on it, they get on it, they're, you know, doing their thing, we're catching them. Um, but when the car loses control and we start to rotate and go behind them, I mean, we, we missed, we, we were pretty fucking close to them. And um, yeah, it, it would have just been a way, way different fucking animal. Um, but yeah, the bridge, that bridge shot, the, the video that from bridge, the bridge. Yeah, when you watch, yeah, you, you, and you guys yeah. can, you can yeah, see it. You, you can see it. It's just, we just missed them. And that was intentional that they were a car ahead of us because we intentionally did not want to be alongside them. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it, it, was, it was the way it was meant to be, you know what I mean? And so many things like that happened. Example, as they continued on and we lost control, right? Um, the car turned around. Uh, we were now facing the wrong direction. Um, we both knew it was all gonna go Wrong. Um, the time slowed down to where raindrops, you, you know, if it was raining, they would never hit the ground because it was so slow. I remember I, in my mind, I was going through so many different thoughts and it's, it's the stuff that goes to your mind when you're about to die, I'm guessing, right? You, you think about so many things that are irrelevant, but clearly important to you, right? Because your brain is choosing what things to trigger. And, um, and there were all these little things and, and I just remember, and, I, and if I didn't mention it, I was filming, right? Because the Evo was next to us. I said, hey, go in front of us and I'll film you. So they were out in front of us. I was filming with my smartphone, my iPhone. When the car rotated and I knew that shit was about to hit the fan, I dropped my phone probably instinctually, right? Because I, I, it just, I just held on, you know, grabbed onto the door and, and the roof and, um, the car rotated as we approached the wall i remember seeing the wall come faster and faster and uh and coy said we're gonna hit the wall and and i don't remember if i even responded or not i think you said shit. or yeah probably one word response i mean you, you're, it's just it's all happening right there and you can hear it in that video you can hear it in the video yeah <laughs> and uh and so that in car footage, we were able to save, and I'll get to that later. But um, in that moment, it was quiet. It was peaceful. I was thinking about a million things. And for whatever reason, like it wasn't scary. You would think, oh, you're about to die. It's scary, right? It wasn't, it was peaceful and quiet because it was that calm before the storm. Because a second and a half later, we smacked that fucking wall and I'll never forget the smack because it was the, the most violent, it was the most violent thing I'd ever heard. Like you don't, I've been in a car accident before. Um, it's not like that. It is a different violent impact from over your, your left shoulder. Like uh, maybe, maybe it, uh, um, like if a football player tackled you and you were just brushing your teeth and you had no idea what was going to happen, right? Like so get you out of your get you out of your seat that it scares you to death and um, I stayed awake during the entire event the car hit the wall instantly it felt like a nuclear bomb went off I, ha I felt this flash of heat and it was windows down nice beautiful day flash of heat kind of glaze over me um, 
I was holding on, the car was inverted upside down, um, and as it rolled back over, I was trying to understand what the fuck, you know, I was just waiting for like, hey, just turn my lights out because I don't know what my last memory is gonna be, but you know, I'm just waiting for that and you're done, right? Um, we hit the ground, the car starts to slide, and then it stops. And all of the violence is over, it's peaceful and quiet again, except for a campfire roaring in my ear. And I'm like, holy shit, I'm holding onto the door, right? And I'm just like, we're I'm fucking alive, dude. And I remember going, Coy, we gotta get out, the car's on fire, I can smell the fire. So I open the door, I get out, and uh, I run around the back side of the car. Now the car is already engulfed in flames. Um, I'm cognizant of where I am, but I'm wearing flip-flops, shorts, and a t-shirt, because I was not supposed to be out there. I was not ready for track day. This wasn't uh, test and tune. This was charity rides, you know, doing a good cause, doing a good thing. Ooh, got to test the car real quick. Let's do a lap. Not a big deal, right? Um, I come around the back side of the car, and the driver's side's engulfed in flames. The rear wheel is missing. Um, when I came around, I was expecting to see him kind of exiting the car at the same time. You know, we just kind of, you know, make a way and go, holy shit. Except that's not what I saw. When I came around the back side of the car, I noticed that the door was still shut. And what caught my attention was the fact that I could see him humped on the steering wheel. Um, the door handle was still in, um, but it was all melted and shit, and it was going quick. Um, I didn't know, I knew what kind of fuel was in the car because we had just filled it up. Um, so my, my initial thought was this thing is one and a half seconds away from blowing the f up, and we're gonna be, you know, this is gonna be like a Paul Walker thing, like instantly, like, like the size of, because I'm an engineer, right? So my brain is thinking the fire and the fuel and the electronics and everything going, and like this is just a recipe to kill us both. Now we survived this crash, but now we're both gonna die in this explosion. So I go to the car and I open the door handle, and uh, I open the door, and Corey's in there. And when I first saw him, um, he had blood on the back of his head. He was just humped on the steering wheel, and I was like, he's dead as fuck. Like, here we go. I got my dead best friend, and he's in this fucking car, he's gonna burn to the ground, right? And I'm like, well, you know, not on my fucking time. And, uh, you know, people have heard stories of, of things that I've done in the past in the military, and, and they know, and I know, that I don't leave nobody behind, ever, no matter what. And uh, and here was an, here was another instance of that. So um, the craziest part. So he's he's in the car, and this is happening like so fast. You know, we it, it slowed down for the for the impact, but this is happening so fast. The car is burning quickly, and the fire is getting out of control very fast. And I go in, I unbuckle his seatbelt, and pull him out of the car. Now, when I pulled him out of the car. I'm five foot five, you know, 160 pounds. He's, you know, 220 pounds, six one. He didn't weigh a dime. He, he was weightless. When I pulled him out of the car, it was incredible to me that he didn't weigh anything. The roof was collapsed in, the roof was pushed down, the, wind, the driver's window was only this tall. Didn't matter. He came out of the car with ease. And when I pulled him out of the car, I got him out of the vehicle, and the second I got him out of the car, he instantly weighed a million fucking pounds. And, and hindsight, looking back, obviously, right, the adrenaline is what helped me take him out of the car because if we had to do it as a dry run today or tomorrow, anybody in, my, in our size class, it's an impossible task to do. If you ever carry someone that was sleeping or whatever, it, like my child, you, you pick them up and they're 60 pounds asleep, they weigh like they're a million pounds. There's no way, there's just no way, right? But here we go, there's another thing that just happened to go right, you know? Adrenaline was hitting at the right time, pulled him from the car. Now when I got him out of the car, he turned into a million pounds again. Um, and I was wearing flip-flops, you know? I fell, um, I got back up, and I was just thinking, out of the car, I got him out of the car, now let's get the fuck from this car before it blows the 
up. Um, so I'm dragging him, and as I'm dragging him, um, a couple of things happened. Now, one part is he woke up, which was awesome because up until that point, he was a doodle, dead weight, um, and I was for certain that he was dead. For certain he was dead. Um, but he wasn't. And, and I remember being so like, oh, like, you're alive, but we're, gonna, we're, we're now we're definitely not going to make it because now you're alive, but we're going to burn next to this car and blow up. So let's go, motherfucker. And he's, he's talking about his ass and he's like, oh, my, my suit has come down. I'm like, come on, we got to go. I don't, we ain't got time for that shit. And, uh, and interestingly enough, um, I wasn't the only one there. Now, some people will, will, I don't know if you get tunnel vision in some of these moments, right? But I remember other people being there and I remember other people helping me and I didn't know if it was like angels and shit, you know, like that's how it's crazy, but hear me out. Um, I just remember people helping me, but I knew that we were by ourselves, but there was people helping us. And um, we got away from the car and I sat him up and he had a big hole in his head. And I was like, well, okay. And what, you know, we're checking them off here. Okay, uh, hit, hit K rail, burst into flames, check. Uh, survived the crash, check. Oh, he's gonna burn to death, let's drag him out. Oh, he's alive. Now it's, oh, he's got a hole in his head. So um, he's got a hole in his head. It's, it's gushing out blood on the back of his head. And I'm like, okay, I can do this. So I stick my fingers in there and I jam it all shut and I'm holding it closed. And, uh, and I'm talking to him and he keeps asking me, am I gonna die? AJ, am I gonna die? I said, no, you're not gonna die. I said, we were gonna die a second ago in that car and we were burning and gonna blow up, but we're good now, we're good. And uh, what I didn't know is at the time, he couldn't see anything. Uh, and he didn't articulate that. He just kept saying, am I gonna die? Because I can imagine he just woke up getting dragged out of a car with me tearing his ass on the ground. Um, now he's blacked out and he can't see anything, but he, 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 he can feel things and he can feel pain, but he can't see anything. So, you know, is this where you go when you die? So I can understand his fear, but, um, but I just reassured him that, you know, everything's going to be okay. Um, the hard part was done, I thought at least, um, that we were going to be fine, you know? And people started coming up and asking, you know, oh my God, you know, and, and it's crazy. People would come up with their cell phones out, you know, right in my face and they're like, oh my god, are you alright? I'm like, no, we just had a car accident. Let me have your shirt. Give me your shirt. I need your shirt. I need something for, to put on his head, you know, and people are taking their shirts off and I'm using their shirt as a rag and, uh, and I'm like, hey, let me have, can I have your water? And they're like, yeah, here's, here you go. And we're using water and we're, and we're trying to make it work. Um, and in the meantime, you know, it's crazy. This is a racetrack. If, when you watch the video, cars are still speeding past us. It was, you, I've done motorsports long enough to know that when there's an accident, red flags go out, all the corner workers tell everybody to stop, and you get off the track so you make way for the emergency vehicles. Watch the video, watch all the extra footage. The car's flying past the whole time, whole time. And I'm like, man, like, they not notice there's a car on fire, you know, people out there trying to make it happen, whatever. But, um, <laughs> they're not going slow either. No, no, shit, they should. They could. They were there faster than the ambulance. They could have swung by. We could have thrown them in the car and <laughs> done a lap to the hospital before the ambulance showed up. But, um, but that's not how it worked out. Um, it actually worked out. Um, so many, so many good things came out of it. The airbags in the car did not go off. We hit the wall. At, we were guessing somewhere between 110 and 120 miles an hour. Okay, um, backwards. None of the airbags went off. Um, and that was a blessing. You know, at first we thought, well, what the fuck? you know, is there a malfunction? What's going on? What happened that the airbags didn't go off? But had the airbags gone off, a couple of things could have happened, right? I could have been knocked unconscious by one of them. There's curtain bags, front bag, knee bag, bags all over the place. It could have hindered me getting out of the car. Um, it could have delayed my reaction getting out. It could have covered his window. So when I got out and I came around and looked to see if he's still in the car, I just see a curtain. And I go, oh, he must be out somewhere. He's over here, but he's not. He's still in the car burning to death, right? Um, it could have, it could have been that snag hazard when I'm trying to get him out. That you know we're getting caught up in these bags, everybody. But they didn't go off, you know. And it's like the gift and the curse, right? Like it, it should have, but woulda, whatever. Um, 
people, you know, we, we hear people see the video and people go, oh, you know, you guys should have been fully up, kitted, helmet and everything. If he was wearing a helmet, you know, he's 6'1", in the car, the roof is already right there. When we flipped this thing over and the oh, roof came in, it. it punctured the back of his head. If he was wearing a helmet and had another two inches of cushion there, I probably would have compressed his spine and broke his neck. Who the f*** knows, right? He could be a paraplegic, you know, he'd be rolling around in a wheelchair um, or dead, you know. It, it could have gone so differently, um, but it went, it went just as bad as it needed to be to write. Um, from there, it was... Uh, I, so, up until this point in time, I had no idea I was injured. So, um, I'm helping him and then people are coming up and helping us. And it wasn't until one of the, one of the people that came up said, hey, are you going to be all right? And I said, yeah, I'm all right. I'm going to be fine. Why? Like, he, he's got a hole in his head. We're trying to fix this shit. And they said, well, what about your arms? And, uh, and that was the first time I'm holding, sitting here holding his head. That's the first time I looked down and I noticed that all of the skin on my arms was missing. And uh, I didn't they probably call it shock, right? Because you don't know until you know. And then when I saw it and I looked down, I realized that all the skin on my fingers and on my arms were missing. Um, it hurt. Then it hurt. Before then, I didn't even feel it. And your neck? Yeah, and, yeah, well, yeah it, it burned. So that explosion that came through. When we impacted the wall, that initial impact, a huge fireball like I said, came through the cabin. It came in the back window, it broke the back window, came in the back window, and it went out my window. Because I was trying to figure out how I had got burned across the whole side of my head and the back of my neck, my ear. You had cuts my too. My eyelashes were gone. From the glass or whatever. Yeah, there was cuts. Um, it was absolutely ridiculous. Um, but that the, the footage after the fact helped us understand what happened. Um, of course, the burns on my hands and everything came from um, the fire. But, yeah, I, I didn't realize how bad it was. Um, and, I, and I continued, you know, we, I, I, I was first one into the ambulance, you know, because they said, hey, let's, let's get you guys taken care of. And, you know, help showed up. They put me in the ambulance. They started working on me. They had him on the stretcher because of his neck. They were worried that, his, that um, you know, maybe he had hurt his neck or broke his neck or something like that. Um, or there was only a white person only stretcher. I don't remember, it was something like that, right? <laughs> but um, it was like, hey, you got, you, you just get in the trail, you can walk yourself in there. Um, but no, they were fantastic. The, the, actually, the crew was fantastic. And they got me in the um, ambulance, and I remember the poor guy uh, that was helping me, he was, I can tell he's, he's done it for a while, but maybe this might have been the realest thing he's ever seen, right? And this is Brainerd, Minnesota, maybe there's not that many incidents or something, but, I was in pain and I, and I was very vocal about it, letting them know that I was in severe pain. Um, and he, inside the ambulance, they have a little safe on the wall where they put the narcotics and they lock it in there so people can't get it. And he was trying to get the combination to open this thing. He kept messing it up and messing it up. And, and he was swiping his eyebrows. And he was like, he's like, I'm sorry, man, I'm, I'm, going, I'm coming. And, he's trying, and I said, hey man, I'm gonna be all right. I'm gonna be all right. It hurts, take your time. And he took a deep breath, put the code in perfectly, opened the safe. Um, he, I think he gave me Demerol or something like that. He gave me something well, he narcotic. You stupid. Oh my God. <laughs> the second he put it in me, it felt amazing. I was like, oh, I can, this is, I can do this. I'm all right now. I'm okay. Before that, I was like, man, you got to help me out, man. Why did it hurt so bad? Um, but he took care of me, so kudos. I, I wish I knew his name. I'd just give him a shout out because he was fantastic. Uh, he started patching me up. Um, I was way too fucked up to, to be patched up, but he was doing what he could do, you know, because in burns, uh, I guess infection is the number one thing. You're, you're exposed, you're raw skin, and they want to make sure you don't get anything in there. And I got his blood in there, a bunch of raw dirt, a bunch of VP 109 and shit all mixed in there. Um, so, uh, so they got us in the they got us in the ambulance and they got us to the hospital. Um, once we got to the hospital, um, you know, they they said, hey, you know, a couple of things were going on. They, they needed to notify our, our significant others, um, or for, for me at least, because I was there with I was there with my son only, uh, which he got ended up getting left at the racetrack, but he figured it out. Um, but the cra one of the craziest pieces is, and I've told this story before. They. Uh, I was wearing a wedding band 
made out of tungsten. Now, all you car guys out there, I get it. You guys know, right? Tungsten is the sh I got it because I work on so much sh my rings would get scratched up and my wife would be like, oh my God, your ring looks so, so messed up. So I got a tungsten one, right? Because it doesn't scratch. It's the hardest shit. That's fantastic until your hands are been burnt to crisp and my fingers are starting to swell up and the lady came in and said, hey, I need to cut off your wedding band or you're gonna lose your finger. And I, they had me doped up on all this stuff. So I laughed at her and I was like, ha ha. Good luck cutting this off because this is what they make the tool to cut it off out of, you know? So she was like, oh, shit. So she went and got a doctor. They came back there talking. And uh, while they were trying to figure out how to figure out if, they're, if I was going to lose my finger or not, I just pulled the ring off with all the skin attached. And, uh, and she turned around and I said, I got it. <laughs> and she was like, oh. And she grabbed a little specimen cup and I dropped the ring in the specimen cup. And, uh, and so, so now I wear, I wear a little silicone one. So, you know, pro tip, if you're going to be a car guy and do <laughs> badass shit, uh, wear a rubber ring. Rubber um, rings and go to the bathroom before you go for rubber a race. Rubber and go to the bathroom before you go <laughs> racing in an accident. Um, but uh, so, so my injuries were, were, I guess, pretty severe. I got third degree burns uh, on a lot of portions of my body, um, dragging this fucker out of the car. Uh, so they said I had to get on a, a helicopter and fly into the city. We were about an hour and a half north of, uh, of the Twin Cities, so I needed to get to the burn center. Um, that was, uh, yeah, that was a, a, an exciting trip. Uh, from there, it was, you know, stitching up his head, patching up my burns, and... And flying you out. Huh? And flying you out. And flying me out, yep, <clears throat> flying me back home. Um, and you were so goofy. I was, I was kind of goofy, apparently. You were so high. <laughs> 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 but I mean, you know, all in all, you know, we, we learned a lot of different things from this. Um, you know, we learned number one, uh, if you're going to change the spark plugs, you know, wait 24 hours before you drive the car. Um, I think you covered that one, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and that's just our little rule. It's kind of funny, but, uh, but live by example, right? It's so crazy. You know, something like this to survive something like this. And I'll be hundred percent honest, you know, like, yes, the, it sucks that the car is damaged. Yes. It sucks that these different things got you know kind of fucked up my trip back to phoenix but you know it broke stuff inside of me for a long time um you know like this is the tough part you know so when i came home you know um i was not very honest with my family um you know hero syndrome or whatever they want to call it. You know, you, you know, everything's fine. You know, I'm good. I'm the hero of the day, whatever you want to call it. Um, inside, I was an absolute wreck. Um, yeah, you just didn't want to address it. Yep. You didn't want to, you know. It and, wasn't until that damn thing rolled back in here. I, I, I try not to think about it at all. You know, I haven't seen this vehicle since I pulled him out of it three years ago. Yeah. Okay. Um, I haven't seen the car. I never saw the car after the incident. But when I pulled him from his seat uh, and turned my back to it, that was the last time I've ever seen it. What's it like for you to experience having a car here with you? Well, I mean, truthfully, I mean, it brings up a lot of bad emotions, but at the same time, it's, I guess I kind of look at things a little differently now, you know, since all the things have happened. I don't look at it as just a negative thing of like, oh, look at the car, oh my God, I almost died in it. I also look at it and go, man, you know, I mean, there's a lot of life that's come from it. I mean, I look at life differently now. I act differently. And I mean, I've been through a lot of stuff with eight heart surgeries and things like that, going through that. I, I, I've always approached life optimistically, but I mean, this brought AJ and I closer than we ever could be. I mean, we'll, I mean we're gonna be old, old, old men when we die and still know each other. You know what I mean? That, that's how, that, that like really ships never go away. And I think about how my family acts, you know, because that scared the hell out of my family, just like his family. I mean, scared the pants out of him. And, you know, you, you saw my son a little bit ago and, and, and you saw how he is. I mean, everybody saw it and I feel like it's a, it, it's a blessing. I know it's a, it was a bad thing that happened and it's tearful and it hurts, you know what I mean? And I wish it didn't happen. It was also extremely expensive. But, you know, not to say you want to throw a dollar figure on there, but it's, it was very expensive. The part that, about it, though, is that I look at it and now because of that, my son who races, my wife who races, other people that we know who race, they go, oh, shit.
That can happen to Coy. That can happen to me. Yeah. And so it's an eye opener to him. It's like, dude, I got to make sure I check all my stuff properly. Let me make sure. You know, my son walks a track now. You know, he walks the track and goes around and says, okay, oh man, you know, this corner right here, it's got a lot of dirt on everything else. I'm going to take this corner a little slower so I don't zip off of it or something like that or have an accident or maybe there's some oil or something like that. People pay attention a little bit more and I feel like it, it helped out quite a bit and I know it helped the show Power Cruise quite a bit because they made some adjustments because they're like, dude, that was the worst crash that they ever had and they've had bad crashes. Like I said, just people got, but nothing like where they had ambulances carting people off and stuff and helicopters flying him home. You know, they flying him to the Hennepin. So I, I don't, it's a bad thing. I'm going to tell you, the hood is going to come off and it's going to go on my wall. You know what I mean? It's going to be a reminder to me. You know, just like the pacemakers reminded me, I'm still kicking. That's reminding me it's still kicking. You know what I mean? I'll probably have AJ sign it so I can have something famous from him. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I mean, otherwise, I mean, it's, 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 it's a car, right? It's what came out of the car to me that's more important. I, I don't know. I think, I think we're very blessed. And, uh, and I think, you know, it must have been what it was supposed to happen because the things we're doing now in our lives, the, our attitudes, I think, are extremely positive. And our kids are, I think, they hold us a little tighter and our wives hold us a little tighter because they're a little happier. Mm -hmm. I'm Coy Christmas, and that's a story, and that's how my best friend saved my life. <laughs>